Hello everyone, welcome to our first Insta Live, this and that, and we're gonna be having a conversation uh, about a phase of adulting, and we're gonna have Divyakshi actually join us um, on this conversation. So she's joining us soon right now. And I can see a couple of people who are joining us right now. It's great to see you here. Hey Divyakshi, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you doing? I am doing well. Now that I've got the technology <laughs> figured out, <laughs> yeah, I feel like I can relax. It so I just want to welcome everybody. So Winked has um, started these Fridays, this and that conversations. And for those of us, for those of you who've been following us on Winked, we're all about adding joy back in adulting. Because a lot of us realize as adults, we were losing the joy that we had as kids. So today we have with us Divyakshi, who is at the precipice potentially of a big adulting moment. She is graduating and is going to be in the workforce very soon. Right, Divyakshi? Yeah. No? <laughs> I'm like in denial, but yeah, it's true. Um, I graduated in May, which is exciting and nervous and all that good stuff. So Divya, actually, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about you? Like, you know, and don't be humble. We know how creative you are and what you're doing. So people know who you are. Um, okay, so well, I'm a senior, um, an illustrator, animator, graphic designer. I've been freelancing for a bit. Um, I'm excited to kind of graduate, but I'm, I'm nervous at the same time. I think that it's definitely a big transition. I'm excited to see what working is going to bring and like, am I going to like it? Am I going to hate it? What's it going to be like when I'm not in school? Um, yeah, all that, all that good stuff. Um, and you enough, go to Parsons, right? Yes, I do go to Parsons. Um, Parsons Pride. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, it's actually a funny thing. You helped me edit my resume like two years ago. Do you remember that? Now that you've said it, it's coming back to me. Yes. Yes. Did it help? It did help. But uh, I remember like when we're young, I mean, when we're my age, I think everyone is so anxious to get ahead. And um, two summers ago, when you helped me edit my resume, I thought that was like the biggest thing I could do. It was like, I have to have the perfect resume. Otherwise, like, there's going to be no point of me going to college. Like everything is going to fall apart. It's going to be horrible. <laughs> It's amazing. So we'll get to resumes and jobs in a second, but I just want to wind back a little bit because you're still in your senior year. Yeah. And I've been reading a lot about how a lot of people who are in their senior year are feeling like they've been cheated out of their last year, which is, which is the most fun, I can say from personal experience. So how does it feel to you and your friends where you are in senior year and it's COVID time, but so you're kind of graduating differently? I think it's like, it's kind of awful to be honest with you, because um, I feel like I've been robbed of like all the interactions I could have had with people. And I think that I barely like speak to any of my friends anymore, just because we're all over the place. And it's difficult, like it's not the same over Zoom, right? Like school on Zoom is not really like a thing. And um, I guess like everyone is like just distancing, like you can feel very much the distance that separates people. And there's only so many Zoom happy hours you can go to. Yeah. And um, it just makes me feel like I really miss the whole going to school, interacting with people and actually experiencing the physical space that they occupy. No, I completely understand. You know, often in the beginning of uh, the pandemic, I remember doing sessions for a lot of companies and we talked about, you know, physical distancing and not really distancing emotionally and it seems like that's what seems to be happening so do you feel like even your close friends even on zoom you've not been able to keep the connection going yeah i haven't been able to keep up with my friends and i think it's because everyone's changed so much during this pandemic and it's so difficult to keep track of everyone's growth and or challenges and i also think that when you're not with people you can't pick up on their vibe or like their feelings or like what they're actually going through. And I also think that in a lot of ways, the entire COVID, going to school during COVID experience has made me feel so small 
in the sense I'm so wrapped up in my own world that I rarely see what anyone else is doing. Yeah. And I think a lot of times, at least in my experience, when we are wrapped up in our worlds and we don't realize the challenges that other people are going through, our challenges seem to get more magnified. Isn't yeah. that, I don't know if that's been an experience that you or your friends have had. Yeah, but at the same time, I think at least with me and my friends, we've done a good job about being sensitive towards everyone else and seeing that everyone's had a rough time. Um, so like, we're definitely aware of that, but it's difficult for sure to look through your own challenges at this time, you know. So what have been some of the biggest challenges? Um, I think that seeing the city change was a big challenge because like, we're so connected to the space around us. And so not being able to go out and like not being able to like meet people when you need to meet people has been a challenge. Um, knowing that like we're graduating into uh, like a COVID economic downturn has been a challenge because it's like, what's gonna happen with recruiting? What, where am I gonna get a job? And um, so those have been challenges. I think maintaining relationships has been the biggest challenge. It's like, how many people are you going to talk to on the phone before you get so exhausted from speaking? And now yeah. when everyone's coming back um, and people are starting to make plans to hang out, even if it's socially distanced, I'm like, I'm not ready to meet people yet because I've spent so much time living alone that now it's suddenly like, wow, it's like so much all at once. <laughs> Yes, we're going from an extreme of constantly hanging out with people and distracting ourselves to we were forced to shut down and look inward. And now in some ways, as we kind of go back, I remember meeting a friend after three months of not stepping out of the apartment, right? And even pressing the elevator button was like, oh my God, this is such a novel experience. Like, should I use my hand? Should I use the key? How should I do this? And you meet somebody for the first time and you don't know whether you should be hugging them because of course that's not appropriate. But like, how do you kind of interact? It's like you're kind of learning all over again how to interact with people. Yeah, and it's like the strangest thing, right? Like I walked past campus the other day and it was like empty, like obviously it was locked and there was no one there. And I was like, that's what the world has come to where like we aren't really like experiencing spaces like that. And you feel that, right? Like that shift when you look at the place that used to be so popping and now it's still, you very much feel bad because it used to be something and I don't know if it's ever going to be that thing again. So the uncertainty also makes you feel sad. Yeah. I mean, uncertainty is really, really tough, right? And I, I'm, I'm sure like graduating right now, uh, and I'm, I'm sure like a lot of you worried about jobs. I remember from the time when I was graduating, which was many, many years back, 17 years back, and it was coming out of... Uh, 9-11 and you didn't know whether you would have a job there are students low student loans um and you wonder right you know how would you get by the only thing that i will say to all of you looking back there is an invisible hand and there's always somebody guiding us so if i knew now what i knew if i knew now um at that time if i knew what i know now i would have potentially gone through life a little bit more differently but I have a question for you. Is there a silver lining that you guys see in, in COVID times, in the lockdown? Oh man, uh, silver lining. I think what we really seeing was the resilience of everyone. Like I think that I had like faculty members, 85 years old trying to doing a good job, like using it. You know what I mean? Like when you have to do it, you have to do it. And I think that particularly in like the art field, it's been great to see all the COVID related work people have made because, and I think that it has made us more sensitive, right? Like it's made us more compassionate. And um, when you're 22, it's so difficult to be compassionate sometimes. <laughs> like, um, so I think that definitely the pandemic gave that. And I think it's that priority straight. At least for me, it like showed me what is important and like what I would like to do with my life after I graduate. I'm not saying I know what I want to do. I don't know what I want to do. <laughs> but like, it definitely helps me understand that human interactions and the way I see myself is more important. That's awesome. So what have you realized about human interactions and what's important in life, Divya, actually over the last one year of being by yourself <laughs> and cool and being isolated? 
I think I like, I wish I had just spent my college experience having more fun. I think when I couldn't have fun, I realized that I should have been having fun. I like, that's the thing, right? Like when you graduate, you realize all the things that you did wrong, like all the things that you wish you had done differently. It only comes to light now. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that I spent so much time trying to pack my resume with things, trying to get ahead of the game, trying to do like all of those internships, all of those jobs, all of those freelancing gigs. And I'm like, now when I'm at the end, I was like, what was the point? Because I can't even put in that freshman year internship I did on my resume. Like it adds no value. And if I had like taken that time for myself and traveled and had fun, I would not have regretted it. So I guess I wish I could go back in time and like tell myself that it's okay, you can have fun. Um, yeah. So, so are you committing to having more fun going forward? Um, I'm committing to trying. I don't know. <laughs> you know, one of my favorite characters from Star Wars, Yoda says, you do or do not, there is no try. <laughs> okay, so um, let's like check back in, in like four months and then I'll, I can tell you if I've like had more fun or not. Okay, and we're going to ask everybody who's viewing us right now to check in with the Vyakshi in four months. <laughs> that would be sometime in April, around tax day, to see whether she is having fun or not having fun. Yes, give me a thumbs up if you are going to check back with her. It's funny you should say tax day. I actually have to file taxes this year and I've never done it before. So that's like a major adulting moment too. Yes, <laughs> like yes file... it is. <laughs> yeah, that was saying if anyone wants to help me file taxes, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> but also like think of it right it's such an amazing moment that you actually have income coming in and you can actually file taxes for it i mean i've heard Ooh. so many people complain about taxes and i'm like guys look at the good news you only file taxes when there is an income yeah i mean when you say it like that i'm very very grateful to uh <laughs> to like to be receiving that income oh my god calvin's comment is so funny yeah, he says he's just added a calendar invite. Yes, Calvin, thank you for that. <laughs> if you can share that with us, it would be great. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's also been, to be quite honest with you, a humbling experience to see what everyone is going through on their own time with COVID and graduating. Um, so yeah, I mean, you feel really bad complaining because like everyone else is in the exact same boat as you or like has things that are like way worse. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I, I actually want to go back to a couple of things that you actually that you said. Uh, one is you talked about the year where there's, it's been really good from a creativity perspective, right? Because so much has come out. And, um, uh, you know, one of my uh, teachers of meditation, Shri Shri Ravi Shankar, he's the inspiration behind Winked. He often says that for creativity to happen, you need to go back into that silent space. So for you as an artist, when there wasn't COVID and there was all the distraction and all the activities that you could do and getting pulled in different direction because there's always fear of missing out, right? How do you find a silent moment to kind of connect back with yourself so that creativity can come from there? That's a really good question. It's like so difficult for me to think about a life before the pandemic. I can't do it. Like it's very difficult. But as for creativity, I think like the thing about making art is so process driven that once you get into that space, it's almost meditative. And now I think of it like a prayer, right? Like I keep saying like my daily art practice is the most important thing I'll do in the whole day. And I'm so lucky to have had that experience because it helps me connect back to myself. And um, just yesterday, one of my professors said that you know, once you start making money from like your creative practice, then it takes the joy out of it. And so then what's the solution? And he went on to say that the most important thing you can do for yourself is to find something that is you do just for you. And that's going to help you connect back to yourself. And um, so I'm excited to like adopt that into my life and try to find some sort of a practice that is just for me and that doesn't have to do with anything else. And I'm hoping that that will help me reconnect. That's really nice. I can share with you what my practice is that I do just for myself. And I'm very selfish <laughs> about it. 
<laughs> Any think, guesses, anyone? <laughs> I think we know what your practice is. Um, meditation, right? I oh, think it, <laughs> that was such a great guess. But I've noticed, right, I think it's really important, similar to what your professor said very wisely, that I think the more we can nourish ourselves, the more we can take care of ourselves, the more we can take care of other people. And often we don't realize that. From a depleted state, you can't be of help to anybody. I actually agree with you. This pandemic, like everyone who talks to me says, how did you get so much done? And when I look back at everything I did last day, I'm like, oh my God, it was a lot. Like it really was a lot. And I look at my next five months and I'm like, I'm booked solid. Like it's a <laughs> lot of work. And um, I think about it. And when I started meditating myself, I definitely saw that paradigm shift happen for me. It went from like being like, I don't have time to meditate because I have so much left to do. And when I would sit down to meditate, I would only think it would be like a to-do list. Like yeah. the entire like 20 minutes I would sit for meditation. It's like, I have to do X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. And then I slowly like started identifying that transition. And now it's like, I can't do it without meditating in the morning. I can't tell you how happy those words make me. <laughs> Because I remember, like I, similar to you, there was a, there was a monk, I started meditating just after graduating. Um, so around the same time as maybe a little bit uh, older than you. And I was like, I could not stop my mind for a nanosecond. And I thought that was a sign for such an intelligent mind that it's constantly <laughs> thinking, not realizing like the mind needs rest like every other machinery on the planet for it to be more effective. Yeah. I actually have a question for you. So, like, sure. you know, you graduated from Wharton, right? Like, <laughs> what, 17 something years. Gosh, we're so old. <laughs> 17 you think, years. When you say we, you mean the royal we, right? <laughs> Thanks, actually. Yeah. So, you know, you know what it's like to be entering a workforce that's so competitive and like so ruthless in so many ways. So, I think, like, what advice would you have to give to people? my age who are like ambitious and anxious to get ahead. Um, like what would you do to balance your state of mind and succeed? That's a really great question. I have a couple of thoughts because I have, um, I have lived through ambition for many, many, many decades of my life. And I don't think you kind of move countries and come to be school if you're not really ambitious. And um, ambition is really good, right? If you're using it. But if you start getting used by ambition and don't know how to control it, it can actually be the driver for insomnia, for unhappiness. And I think one thing that I would say is do, often we're ambitious because we want to prove ourselves to other people or sometimes even to ourselves, right? And rec recognize where that need to prove is coming from. It's coming from a deep place of insecurity. And no matter how much we achieve on the outside, that insecurity will not get filled. I have spoken to the most successful people, CEOs, millionaires, billionaires, and they still feel like there's more to prove. And I don't know where this ends. So I'm like, it's great for it to drive you, but don't let it drive you. And also recognize that everybody is different. Like I know I've been in the workplace where we have a curve at the end of the year, everybody's evaluated. Somebody does really well, somebody not so much. You know, you rank everybody, but just realize that you can't really rank anybody because your gifts, they actually are very different and they're unique to you. My gifts are very unique to me and there's no point in me competing with you or vice versa. Right. That's great. But you know, I mean, this is all great in like, <laughs> to say, but when you're in a field, especially when it's a creative field, so be mute, like let it be music or art, design, writing, you're only judged by what you do. You're judged by the things that you make. So then how do you step away from the stuff you're creating or how do you let it not affect your state of mind because you're constantly being critiqued? That's really great. I think that's a really good point. How do you separate yourself from your work? How do you separate yourself even from your own qualities? How do you do it? <laughs> for me, the answer has been having distance and that only comes from meditation, right? And also recognizing that some of the biggest artists, and you will know this better than I do, some of the most famous artists, did they have any fame during their lifetime? 
No, but what drove them insane for most of them was that their work was judged so heavily, right? Like it's the rejection and the disappointment that drove them nuts. Or that there was a passion inside of them that they could not, that, they, that could not stop no matter what happened. People told them a million times that they weren't great. And yet there was this need to express. I think if you keep life as a way to express what's happening inside and doesn't really matter. It's, it's like when kids dance or when like I put music and I dance when there's nobody around. It, I don't, I'm not dancing for anybody else but for myself. And if we could do that in every act when we're doing it as an expression of who we are, then the competition and then the judgment goes away. Who cares? As if people know everything. <laughs> I mean, that would be a great practice to adopt. I think that's one good thing that came out of COVID is that you don't see people as much, so you don't feel judged as much. So then it's like much better because <laughs> you can actually focus on what's important in life. I definitely think that a lot of like my carefree attitude now has like come from not interacting with people and like only retaining the relationships that were not superficial. That's and awesome. That has really helped. I'm um, going to just share a secret because I have... Um both been a super judgmental person and also been at the receiving end of a lot of judgment. Judgment bothers us when we judge ourselves. And other people's judgment bothers us the most when we're hard on ourselves. So if we can just ease off on ourselves and be a little kind to ourselves, other people's judgment will not affect us so much. But you know, how do you not, that's the, it goes down to the same thing is like, how do you make a conscious effort to not judge yourself? when like it's so easy to judge people now right like our lives and our lives are not really private right because of social media everything you're always your life is public everyone always is seeing what you're doing has an opinion on it how do you not judge yourself then really good question i have a question is your life on social media really your authentic life no, no, it's not i mean it's come not. on with the it's amount not. of filters we put there the amount of like it's not really a real life. No, no. Right? Yeah, sure. And I think the question is to recognize what might be happening without judgment. Like, we don't need anybody from the outside to beat us down because we're doing it to ourselves all the time. That's and true. if we can't be kind to ourselves, I promise you, you can't be kind to anybody else. No, that is true. I think that being kind to yourself is an important thing. And I think that I'm like very grateful for people I go to school with because they've kind of like really helped, helped just be kind to me okay. and to the people around me. And I think that when you're an artist in this field, like you have to be sensitive because very often people are making work that's so personal. Yeah. And so you have to approach it with that sensitivity. And so actually on that, I have a question for you, right? You so I've worked with a lot of artists. I used to be at Ogilvy and it, art is such a personal thing. It's coming, it, it's, sometimes it's an extension of who you are. Like you've put your emotion there, you've put your heart there. And yet when you get feedback, feedback on it, not criticized, but feedback on it, how do you take it without it being personal? Oh man, I can tell you like once I was in school and I got a bad critique on an animation I made and I went to the bathroom and I cried. And because everyone else in class did such a good job on that animation. I was just learning how to new, like use new software. I was so upset. And I think that that made me realize that that's so wrong because everything I do, all the work I make, even the work I do for my clients, there's a lot of emotion involved in it. And I think over the years, I kind of just consciously made an effort just to distance myself from it. Like I am not my work and like I will never be my work. I think like my emotions and my sensibilities and the way I see the world is very much a motivation for my art making practice. But I think I stop and I constantly remind myself that I am not the work that I do. That's awesome. Do you also, I'm just wondering, because when I get feedback, and earlier I would not take feedback so well, right? I would defend it. No, I did this because of, I did this. Book. And then I read this book called The Growth Mindset, which said, you know, you, you can either take it as, I am this with all of my talents, or you can say, I'm a constantly learning, evolving being. And if it's a constantly learning, evolving being, then you take feedback differently. And that, that is what kind of lit the light bulb for me saying, 
yes, why am I defending things where it could actually be a learning moment for me? For sure. I think that when people are not easy, right? And like, <laughs> I have to work with people every day. Mm-hmm. And like, sometimes like, you know, we go through like, what, 15 drafts sometimes of creatives. And it happens really quick. It spills into like, 2am, you're like, spilling out draft number 15 for some ad that needs to go up the next day. Um, it really like, I used to be so defensive about it. It's like, no, 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 no. And then I realized that I can learn from every single thing I do. And oh, like, if I'm not attached to my work, then there's no space for me to come in with that attitude saying, I am right. Like, this has to be it. Do you know what I mean? I think that, and the minute you start, I look at everyone as someone I can learn from. And I know that sounds like such a cliche, but it's true. So the minute I start treating the opposite person with that kind of respect, it, it automatically makes me more receptive to their feedback. It's like, no, it's this beautiful. person definitely has something valuable to give me. That's beautiful. It's very nice. So I, I know we have just a few minutes before we kind of, I can't believe it's been half an hour already, but it's just a few minutes. I also want to see if people have questions for the Vyakshi. It's a great one. We can ask her questions. If you have questions for me, just type them and we can see. Otherwise, we'll continue our conversation for the next uh, couple of minutes too. Um, maybe actually one question I do have is, you said, you know, I am half excited and half petrified of joining the workspace. So tell me what makes you excited and what makes you a little bit like, ooh, I don't know. Um, I think what makes me like the I don't know thing is how competitive everyone is to get ahead. And like, I think that the past four years in school has just been focused on like, developing yourself as an individual, like expressing yourself. But I'm so scared that once I graduate, I'm going to lose that sense of self and like, go into this workforce where everyone is trying to achieve the exact same goal. It's like, think about like, 50 people getting into one door that's only (laughs) open for five minutes. Like, that's what it feels like. Am I going to make it? Am I going to, like, what's going to happen? I don't know. So that's what scares me. And I also feel like um, when you're in college, like right now, there's room for you to get lost and you know you find your way back. Because you have to. Like, there's direction here. But what happens when that gets taken away from you? What if I get lost in the workforce? Am I going to find my way back? It's beautiful. These are great. These are very, um, I don't remember having these questions when I was 22. <laughs> I just wanted to conquer the world. So let me just tell you that you're far more mature at 22 than I was at 22. So I'm sure that uh, you will always have your true north to guide you as to what is truly intrinsically right for you and what makes you happy. And, you know, coming back to your true north again and again so you don't get lost. I think my friends can definitely like debate the whole majority thing. I don't know how much <laughs> I actually am. Uh, may come off that way, which is great. <laughs> but I think you're that... doing a great job with that in coming off that way. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that yeah. But overall, it does. It is terrifying graduating during the pandemic, obviously. Um, but I think we got this. <laughs> I'm hundred percent sure you've got this, and I can only tell you that. You know, having graduated during the pandemic, it's really stressful. You don't know how it's going to net out. And over a, over a period of a few months, a couple of years, it becomes okay. And you will realize that, you know, you were really stressed at that time, but life will take care of you. And you will land somewhere and something will work out perfectly. And it'll make you so resilient because you, you're entering the workforce with such a challenge that anything after that will not affect you so much. Like you'll have such fortitude So I understand that it's really tough for this class of yours, you know, to graduate in a year like this, to not hang out with friends, to get into a workplace, which might be the first few months completely on Zoom. Um, I tend to look at life with a silver lining, but I'm sure that it'll bring up the best in all of you. Well, I hope so. And I think like everything happens for a reason, right? So I guess, I guess we can make, I keep saying I'm like, Finally, I'll I'll be able to tell my grandkids, like, yeah, it was me. I was the one who graduated, you know. Uh, Uh, Yes. Yeah. So Calvin's asking a question, so we might go over by a minute. What's your dream job? I don't know, Cal. I don't even know what I want to eat for dinner, Calvin. (laughs) So I think that's a very big question. I don't know what my dream job is. I think it would just be 
it has to be what something that I'm creating and hopefully like that's it but yeah well um that's awesome thank you so much for taking the time and chatting with us and being so honest with us and um mm -hmm. uh, it was this half an hour's gone by much faster than i thought it would so i yeah. guess it was a fun conversation it was and i think that like for everyone watching just like all of nine people <laughs> um you know i mean if you guys do have questions i guess can they reach you like is there any place that they can like drop that in follow up Yeah, I think they can just drop a question even on the winked page and then we okay. will definitely find a way to get back to them. Okay, well, okay. that would be great. Awesome, everybody. Have a great rest of the Friday and I hope you've already started sneaking into the weekend and you're not going back to work.